네 안녕하세요 코인캐스트 구독자 여러분 저는 해외 시황 전문 리뷰를 하고 있는 미닛맨이라고 합니다 오늘은 저번에 소개시켜 드렸던 로버트 그린이 이 메타 히어로라는 새로운 프로젝트를 런칭한다고 해서 인터뷰를 진행해 보았습니다 요새 이 메타버스 기술이 대세로 떠오르고 있죠 모두가 아실 테지만 간략하게 설명을 해드리면 VR이라고 불리죠 이 가상현실 세계에서 우리가 회사로 출근도 하고 어, 게임도 하고 사람들과 수다도 떨수 있는 그런 기술입니다 이 메타 히어로라는 프로젝트는 쉽게 말해서 3D 스캐너를 가지고 실제 사람들의 모습을 본을 떠서 이 가상현실 세계, 즉 게임 세계의 캐릭터로 만드는 그런 프로젝트입니다 만약에 게임을 좋아하시는 분들이 계신다면 게임 속의 내 캐릭터를 실제 내 모습과 똑같이 만들 수 있다 정도로 생각하시면 될것 같습니다 자 그럼 실제로 이 로버트 그린이 어떤 비전을 가지고 이 기술을 어떻게 접목시킬지 한번 알아보겠습니다. Good morning, Mr. Green. Oh. Hey, how are you? Good to see you again. Yeah, likewise, man. How are you doing? What time is it where you're at? We're at uh, 3 p.m. right now. Okay. It's how about, how about yours? Uh. 9 a.m. I'm in Turkey right now. Oh, good morning then. Good morning. Yeah. Good afternoon to you. Yeah. Man. Pleasure to see you again. Yeah, so, man. So, it has been a month, actually, We ever since we talked about your Tencent project. Uh, yes. Time goes by, I guess, quick. Yeah. <laughs> I can't tell right now. Could you, like, tell our subscribers some brief update about the Tencent? Yeah, I mean, look, uh, if you haven't heard already, um, one of the biggest changes is that they've now kind of pivoted into what I suppose we can call the equivalent of a, a venture capital fund or a hedge fund. Mm -hmm. um, they are now diversifying from, you know, just investing, investing, let's say, passively into various mm -hmm. crypto assets. Mm -hmm. uh, they have now invested in my project, mm -hmm. uh, MetaHero. And so... They've launched this uh, IDEO launchpad. This it's called the Temps. It's Gem, Gem launchpad. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I had been working on my project for a while, and it just made absolute sense for me to have the public presale on the on the Tencent uh, launchpad platform, which is actually ongoing right now. Mm -hmm. um, and this will open the door for you know. You know, if you invest the the funds raised from the Tencent ICO into like Ethereum staking or whatever else, uh, it's very predictable. It's very stable. But if you invest uh, the funds from the ICO into, mm -hmm. say, my project and then say ten others in the future, the mm -hmm. potential for the dividends paid back, you know, used for the buyback, will be mm -hmm. astronomical, limitless, That's essentially. Right. So mm -hmm. it creates this really exciting now. Uh, complete structure of, of, of the Tencent platform to be like maybe the new age venture capital fund which you can co-own mm -hmm. just by holding the token so mm -hmm. that's really exciting that's sweet so as far as i'm concerned you're launching your new project called meta hero right so could you like tell us about a little bit about your meta hero first to start off absolutely absolutely so you know I would say that I'm a full-on crypto believer mm -hmm. uh, for, I would say, around a year now. It mm -hmm. took me it took me three years to get there to fully wrap my head around the fact that this is the inevitable future. There's no way around it. It's either going to be, you know, through CBDCs where central banks kind of take the lead, or through decentralized mm -hmm. uh, cryptocurrencies. And I realize that there's going to be this race between the two because mm -hmm. uh, the governments obviously don't want to lose power over their money because that's the only way they can control people. Um, and when I realized that and saw what's happening in China, I saw what's happening in you know Russia and Turkey, you hear what the, the EU is trying to do with their own CBDC, you realize that there's going to be a, this race against the, against this because it's, it's going to be an... A, Assault on our freedom, I believe. Long term, it's going to ultimately lead to humans having very little freedom. Similarly to what's happening in China, it will happen all over the world if we let this happen. Right. So I started thinking, like, what can I do to help accelerate the mass adoption of these decentralized currencies and just that's that part of the space. Mm -hmm. And after looking at 
as from the perspective of an investor, I browsed probably through the top 1,000 tokens on Coin Market Cap and Coin Gecko, mm-hmm. and I noticed something that stood out to me that every single one of these projects, practically all of them, uh, were marketed and tailored to a very more technical audience. They were trying to solve some sort of DeFi thing or, or some sort of technical chain type of solution or a swap. Nobody seemed to be going after the, the, the person that is not really interested in crypto, not interested in speculating, not interested in investing. There's a lot of people that don't like dealing with money. Um, and I, I, I kind of reflected upon my own gaming, gaming background. I did a quick Google search and saw that there's 2.7 billion yeah. gamers in the world. And I, I thought to myself, what could I do to get like one or half a percent of, of those people? And uh, things just started coming together uh, in my head. And I, I, a very close friend of mine who's a very, very successful entrepreneur, he had built this incredible technology which is actually our, our 3D scanner. Mm-hmm. Um, it's 64 cameras set up in a way like it's extreme. It sounds basic when I explain it, but it took them years to build this. Like to get the right latency of the of the pictures being taken and being sent to the server for processing, they had to create their own wiring system of special combination of metal, including gold, okay. to have the electrical signal go quicker. Otherwise, they were like shadows. And so there's crazy technical things that they like overcame. Mm-hmm. Long story short. Their technology has been tried and tested, and it actually, if you ever played this, the game Cyberpunk 2077, yeah, all of the characters game. in mm-hmm. all the characters in that game, all the textures, the models, they were made using their scanner. Oh. So what's yeah? So what CD? That's why it's one of the most realistic games uh, that's know, ever right? been released. Yeah. I, I know there's different opinions about the gameplay, but that's 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 not related to the scanning technology. Mm-hmm. But the characters themselves and the character creation actually at the beginning of the game, that's thanks to using this uh, mm-hmm. Wolf Studios technology. What they did, uh, many people don't know this, but in game development, uh, so-called NPCs, non-player characters, mm-hmm. to design a human-like NPC, it takes a, an, a, um, a digital artist around five to 600 hours mm-hmm. to design one, one character. Because you know, like it has to have human-like features, has to have flaws, like imperfect skin. That's right. It, it cannot be fully symmetrical, otherwise it looks like some weird android. Mm-hmm. So they have to like work on you know the nails, every single little detail, and it takes around 600 hours to create one character. And mm-hmm. obviously, you need hundreds, if not thousands, if not tens of thousands of them in the game. So what CD Projekt did with the scanner is they scanned all of their employees, mm-hmm. um, a few hundred of them in this meta scanner in two days. And uh, they used the textures of their employees and the, 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 you know, their bodies and all that to make these uh, in-game characters. And they said, mm-hmm. I was told by Wolf Studio that CD Projekt came back to them and said, you saved us one and a half years of work in two days. <laughs> that's right. So that's to give you like a perspective of this technology and it's already use in the gaming industry. And that's just the first game developer that used it. Mm-hmm. You know, imagine now, I, know, I heard there's rumors of uh, Grand Theft Auto 6 coming out yeah apparently there's, I heard a, that too. there's a rumor I'll yeah there's a rumor that they're gonna have yeah. it's one of my favorite games yeah mm-hmm. they're they're apparently integrating cryptocurrencies into the game apparently you'll get paid cryptocurrencies for completing missions which is like mind-blowing mm-hmm. um so imagine now uh them using our technology to, to scan tens of thousands of people but i'm getting a little bit ahead of myself essentially what we did was we took this meta scanning technology and we tokenized it mm-hmm. we, because right now it's only used by some large businesses like CD Projekt. I decided that what we need to do is uh, raise the money um, and build maybe 10 of them, place them around the world, tokenize their usage, uh, mm-hmm. create like a, a, a token. We call it the hero token. It's a utility token to actually uh, get yourself scanned. You can, uh, you can scan anything. You don't have mm-hmm. to even scan yourself. You can scan works of art. You can scan your dog. You can scan anything. Um, you can create NFTs. We're going to be building a marketplace, um, and and if you really think about it, the use cases of such scans are, are practically endless. And uh, essentially, phase one, which is what we're at, we're about to list on PancakeSwap. We're now going through the aforementioned uh, Tencent uh, gems public mm-hmm. presale. The the signups for the whitelist are now open. Um, all you need is 10,000 Tencent tokens on your MetaMask to get to get listed on the on the whitelist. 
And uh, so far, the response has been really, really positive. So we will see, you know, how the market actually quantifies the the value of our idea and execution so far. And we're going to take it from there. And I believe it has the potential to become one of the the biggest projects uh, in crypto because it's just so different. And I think people um, enjoy this refreshing kind of approach to tokenizing a real world business model. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, yeah, so that that's where we're at. So I'm not a heavy gamer or something, but I'm I'm a gamer as well. And mm-hmm. from my perspective, it's very interesting idea to it's sort of like scanning your face and body, like your appearance, and you're putting that in yeah. the game, right? As a character. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that that's is the crazy. goal. Totally. Yeah. That's phenomenal. Imagine. Imagine playing GTA as yourself. Yeah, like, It'd be so immersive, right? That's You'd right. be scared to get killed. Mm-hmm. It'd be like, oh my god. <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, I love that idea, and you know. Yeah, and the technology is all there to do it. You know, once after we launch, I'm sure several game developers will reach out to us because if yeah. if they can market their GTA, say, as I can, hey, you can I can't play wait yourself. to see your project like in reality, like, but. Yeah. Yeah, how did you like come up with this idea? I mean, this phenomenal idea. Uh, you know, it, it kind of became obvious to me, but when I really reflected on it, I realized it was a, a lifetime in the making. It was my uh, I used to be a hardcore gamer, um mm-hmm. and then I was hardcore into business, and then I got hardcore into crypto, and I made all all the necessary sort of networking connections with be it with Tencent, be it with Wolf Studio. Um it was like a eureka moment, like a light bulb went off in my head. Mm-hmm. I'm like, oh my gosh, this is the thing that I need to do. Um, because imagine that we place long term a hundred or a thousand of these machines all over the world, which is which is very it's very viable. It's it's to- totally doable. Exactly. Um, in one of them, in one of them, a hundred, I think, for my calculations, around a hundred to hundred fifty thousand people could scan themselves every year. Mm-hmm. Um, so imagine having a hundred or a thousand of them. You could get millions and millions of people scanning themselves. And this is not just for gaming. You can mm-hmm. later use their avatars for online, uh, you know, what do you call it? Virtual fitting rooms. You could try on clothes perfectly to see mm-hmm. how they fit on your v- virtual body. You can even like code into these avatar NFTs royalties. So like I, I mentioned, uh, how much work it takes to create an in-game character for this game studio. So imagine you scan yourself for GTA and uh, you create a NFT with a public like uh, public license. You set the sort of the privacy settings that say that you you allow game developers to use your avatar, but in return they pay you say thirty or fifty dollars for using your avatar in GTA, mm-hmm. and so you can get like paid money for actually having paid to scan yourself. Um, because imagine how much easier it would be for a GTA if they could click import 10,000 human models into the game that allow us to do so and then just pay them I don't know 50 bucks each they have they have hundreds of millions of dollars of budget so I'm sure that's one of the 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 big pieces is actually designing the game and the characters so other than that um, the 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 owner of Wolf Studio he has this ambitious goal of to to create the largest digitized uh, database of real world objects in the world Mm -hmm. so Sony has something similar with audio where um, movie producers and film producers they just they have like a subscription or something like that I've never Mm -hmm. actually had access to it but this gigantic database of all the imaginable sounds in the world Mm -hmm. to use you know for for movie making and and whatnot we're considering making the biggest database of digitized real-world objects so imagine game developers or 3d animators just drag and dropping things from the real world into the into their game or into their movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, it could be something as silly or silly as simple as mm-hmm. um, a piece of grass scanned from this part of the world that you can now import into your game and, and use as a texture uh, all over the game. So I think you know, combined with uh, game developing engines like Unity, I, I think this will be the future of game design, where it's drag and drop, and. Uh, mm-hmm. It's 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 quite incredible to really fully kind of grasp the potential of this technology, um, and we we are a first mover. Nobody, as far as I know, has commercialized this kind of B to C, where any any person off the street can come in and and scan themselves. That's why we're building this app. Uh, as you know, you know, 
I don't know if you have the pleasure of buying something on PancakeSwap, mm -hmm. setting up MetaMask with BSC. It's a little bit tricky. It's kind of sometimes right. it feels like you're like, like you're a, like a junior hacker or something. Like, <laughs> did I do this right? <laughs> right. That's right. <laughs> so, so we're, we're 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 looking to bridge all the gaps. So within our app, we're going to be integrating a, a company that allows you to buy crypto without having to buy crypto, mm -hmm. so to speak. So you, you can use uh, anything like uh, your neo bank, like Revolut or, or, or credit card, mm -hmm. to buy the hero token directly without mm -hmm. having to engage in through the app, in the current right. using the app. Through the app, yeah. Mm -hmm. So fiat to hero is what what our goal is with the app, and then you have the hero on the app. And it's worth mentioning we have a we have programmed in a very clever deflationary tokenomics, which is a, mm -hmm. which is the kind of the hot thing right now. Mm -hmm. uh, similar to Tencent, but I would say even we went a step further, where our transaction fee, the fee on every transaction is five percent. One percent of it gets burned. For, for eternity, 1% gets distributed amongst all holders, and then 3% actually gets added to the pancake swap mm -hmm. liquidity pool. Mm -hmm. So it creates with this ever rising kind of liquidity pool, which is a buffer for all investors because it's permanently locked. Mm -hmm. So they don't have anything to worry about. And it's a deterrent from day traders. You know, since there's a 5% fee on the buy and then a 5% fee on mm -hmm. the sell, you're not going to see these swings of people just kind of day trading, mm -hmm. pumping it and then dumping it. Um, it incentivizes long-term holding, so that's the kind of people we want. We don't want the the people, you know, hunting for the, the exactly, quick buck. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, speaking of the profitability of your project, are you like? Mm -hmm. Do you have um, target market? Like, do you, are you willing to sell these scanners to the company or individuals or or even both? Yeah. That's a great question. So in the beginning, we'll we'll definitely be managing them on our own because we need to see if uh, you know some technical things, some issues, some maintenance things come out. Mm -hmm. But long term, the vision is to franch to have a franchise model, mm -hmm. um, where say even yourself, if you are willing to uh, to say set up a set up a spot in in Korea and uh, place one of these scanners and run it and maintain mm -hmm. it as a business, uh, you could license it in a franchise model and then. Mm -hmm. With every transaction, automatically a percentage of your, let's say your revenues, uh, would be paid out back to us in, mm -hmm. in back into our company reserve. Mm -hmm. So, kind of automating the franchise model with with uh, with you know smart contracts. Mm -hmm. So that's also that's also very exciting. And I think that's the only way we would reach um, you know mm -hmm. hundred plus or a thousand scanners in the world. Mm -hmm. So, like I love I love the fact that you mentioned uh, Grand Theft Auto. Do you have any other games in your mind that you want to apply this MetaHero? Like, you know, yeah. we have, you know, like internationally famous games like League of Legends or like sure. Battlegrounds. Do you have any other yeah. games? Well, we'll obviously be starting with uh, talking with CD Projekt since the relationship is there and they understand the technology, mm -hmm. they've used it. So there, there's that. Um, I don't, you know, they, they have this... Uh, they're known for taking their time with developing games, so who knows what they're working on already. Um, but I, I imagine all sports games mm -hmm. will be interested. All EA will definitely be interested to scan oh, every like single FIFA. athlete in the world. Mm -hmm. FIFA, NBA, all, all of the, you know, every single, it just makes sense because we'll be able to build these mobile scanning mm -hmm. units which they could send to the team's stadiums or wherever they practice and just scan systematically. Mm -hmm. Every single football player in the in the world with ultra realism. It'll be scary, I think. It'll be maybe more realistic than watching it on the TV. <laughs> um, so so definitely that, and and then we'll see we'll see you know whoever comes to us, we'll be open mm -hmm. to work with them. But I think there'll be the game developers that realize that this will be a huge USP. Yeah, right. they'll be kind of knocking on our doors definitely. pretty early. Yeah, I can definitely tell that it will have a great impact on the gaming industry if you launch this project, like in reality. So how will this gaming industry potentially change thanks to the MetaHero, like eventually? Um, so I think it'll just become like hyper personalized, mm -hmm. kind of like our phones kind of like what humans like to do with stuff they own they like to personalize it to make it feel like more of unique to them mm -hmm. um, me personally as a gamer whenever I play something that I could set up my own character I would typically try to make it look a little bit like myself because then I would That's feel right. kind of like it's me 
Yeah, yeah like it's me in the game. I know there's a bunch of people that rather play a, a, a sexy elf or, you know, mm-hmm. an orc or whatever, like not be themselves. That's and that's fine. There's all, there's 2.7 billion gamers. We're not going after everybody. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, obviously, I don't believe like every game will be uh, necessarily changed by this, but it'll change the gaming industry in twofold. That one, it can make it more sort of uh, engaging because mm-hmm. the user can play themselves. And two, it'll make game development much quicker where they need to use uh, real, real life like uh, human NPCs. Mm-hmm. Uh, you'll be able to tap into say, imagine if we scanned over a million people, then uh, Grand Theft Auto could create a city where every single human being is different, that you never see wow, anyone. That's repeat. crazy. It would, it would, mm-hmm. It, and maybe you would see yourself or your friend would see you walking, you know, as an NPC yeah, we'll and dri- drive you over as a, with this car. <laughs> uh, it's going to be it, mind blowing. Yeah. And, mm-hmm. and it's all within reach, you know, so it's, it's funny to say this, but it's like we're maybe a year away from that really happening. So, um, yeah, that's crazy. So where do you see the meta hero in five to ten years? Like. Hmm. Um, man, well, if we pull this off, mm-hmm. this will be, and I don't see any reason why we wouldn't pull this off. We have to just stay focused and kind of silo our attention and focus. But um, I would see this becoming one of the biggest crypto projects in the world mm-hmm. because it's so different and because it doesn't compete with anyone else. You know, mm-hmm. you look at the top five, they're all kind of competing against each other the Cardanos, the Polka Dots, mm-hmm. the Ethereums. Um, this will be a thing of its own. And because we have the opportunity to be the first ones there, mm-hmm. anyone who tries to copy us will look like a fool. Like mm-hmm. who will want to go into some other one, some other scanner when like a year later when, when we, ours are all in place. Um, so, you know, that in five years, 10 years, I, oh, that's hard to imagine. 10 years, I hope we beat the CBDCs with the decentralized sort of crypto mass adoption. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, they'll be scanning us and using those scanners to, to maybe uh, monitor us or something like that. But <laughs> yeah, uh, in five years, I would say there will be several hundred scanners all over the world. We'll have scanned maybe uh, 10 to 20 million people, maybe more. Mm-hmm. Um, we'll have scanned most of the artwork in the world because that's also something we're going to be targeting is getting our mobile units say, sent to a museums and they can scan all of their their paintings their sculptures and uh, creating a secondary source of revenue for themselves in the form of digital N- nfts they look magnificent they, they often look more beautiful than mm-hmm. in real life because you can modify the lighting you can do anything mm-hmm. um so there's going to be that and then the dig- digitized database of real world mm-hmm. objects um you know there's artists, there's, the current machine is stood in Poland. A lot of artists in, in Poland, they joke that if you haven't filmed your music video in the 3D mm-hmm. scanner, you're not, you're not a serious artist. Mm-hmm. So there's already that happening. There's people using it. You know, you just stand in this chamber and uh, you can create your, your artistic sort of representations and, and then use that in the, some digital software to, to create mind-blowing things. Mm-hmm. So... To answer your question, it's hard for me to predict, but if we get this right, even a piece of it, we will be easily one of the biggest and hottest projects in in the space. And, you know, another thing that I think no other project, as far as I know, tackles is getting non-crypto people into crypto. Mm-hmm. And that's what we will specialize in. You know, if someone doesn't care for Bitcoin or anything else, and they're still, they'll, they'll still want to scan themselves, that's someone you would maybe never never get into crypto otherwise. Um, and then once they have the hero tokens in their app, they see that they're earning the rewards. They'll be like, oh, man, this is interesting. Maybe I should mm-hmm. explore more. That's kind of my thought behind it. That's my ultimate kind of goal is that mass adoption. Uh, everything is secondary uh, to that. So hopefully we will we will play our part in getting moving forward to where the whole world needs to go, which is the mm-hmm. em- embracing of cryptocurrencies as a legitimate, um, you know, m- as a perceived store of value and a technology that's that's more important than anything else that mankind has invented in the history of monetary sort of existence. Um, so yeah, you know, I observe on my LinkedIn. I often like I have like forty thousand professionals observing me there. I often put up these polls, kind of gently probing people's mental sort of perception of crypto and or Bitcoin. 
And it's kind of scary to see how uh, some people react with, with anger and fear. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, the media, if you watch the mainstream media and you absorb that information, you will think that way. So uh, I tend to think that our only hope is focusing on the younger generation and mm -hmm. kind of saying, okay, folks that are over 50 and think crypto is a scam or a Ponzi scheme, you guys will just need to go away and we will we will determine, you know, long term that that fiat is the biggest scam of history. And mm -hmm. so that's that's where I'm at. Targeting the the youth, making it engaging. Like imagine I don't I don't know any celebrities or, or influencers in Korea, but imagine getting our first scanner in Korea and inviting like the three biggest influencers in Korea. They probably have tens of millions of followers. Mm -hmm they'll happily probably scan themselves and create content around that. And it creates this like self-propelling marketing madness yeah. uh, where all their fans see and they're like, oh my gosh, I want to get scanned too. Or I want to buy an NFT of my favorite influencer. So mm -hmm. the marketing potential is also astronomical, which is mm -hmm. really exciting to tap into your question. That's why I think mm -hmm. in five to 10 years, the potential is, is, is quite literally limitless. It's really limitless in this case. Um, so it's exciting. So you're sort of um, building a bridge connecting the crypto market into the gaming industry, right? So you're sort of... Yeah, I would say the gaming industry. I would say the social media industry. Because imagine the most basic use cases have a cool 3D mm -hmm. profile picture, right? That's and right. Everybody will want that. Everybody's trying to make their profile the most Definitely, unique yeah. possible. Um, so there's that. That's like the lowest hanging fruit is just social media profile mm -hmm. pictures. Mm -hmm. um, then there's a the fashion industry of, you know, what I mentioned before, the trying clothes on virtually. Uh, there's medicine where you can use these scans to do various things in medicine. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, and I'm sure there's a bunch of others that I'm not mentioning right now, but they will all come out in the execution. Mm -hmm. So what would you tell the investors who are willing to invest in your great project in Korea? Do you have any couple of I would mm -hmm. Yeah, I would say if you understand even a piece of what I'm saying now, I'm talking about this potential. And if you take a look at my track record, so I, I don't say this in a boastful way, but as an investor myself, I only invest in people. The ideas are really secondary because the idea is only a it's only as good as the person that's executing it right mm -hmm. and if you take someone an entrepreneur who's done something successful before at scale mm -hmm. then for them to repeat that success it's say a hundred to a thousand times higher likely than mm -hmm. someone who's never done it before who's trying to do it mm -hmm. that's just uh, that's just kind of the way the world works like I'm venturing into the uncertain sort of arena of entrepreneurship with MetaHero, but I know exactly what to expect there. I know what to do. I have the team as well from my previous business, which uh, are, are seasoned like myself. Mm -hmm. We have the funds. We have the technology. It's mm -hmm. tried and tested by CD Projekt, as I mentioned. Um, we will see how our, uh, our uh, DEX listing goes on PancakeSwap, but I expect mm -hmm. it to be really, really hot even considering the market conditions. So if you just buy some hero and hold, I do believe it may be one of the best investments of your life. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's worth the risk. I think the return to risk is so astronomically, like the ratio is so incredibly high, uh, the risk to reward that it's worth taking a dip. But obviously, do your own research. Uh, take a look at what I've done before. Take a look at Tencent, where I helped them attain their, their, mm -hmm. their current kind of level of success. Take a look at our white paper. We'll actually be releasing the Korean version uh, very soon. Uh, I think, in, yeah, but by the end of this month, by the end of June, mm -hmm. definitely by the time this uh, our interview is mm -hmm. published. So take a read and uh, see what you feel. If you're a gamer, hell yeah, invest because maybe you'll just help uh, yourself get scanned and, and uh, make some money uh, on top of that. So mm -hmm. that, that's what I would say. Okay. So... Like at this point in time, if I, let's say if I want to invest, what are the procedures? Like where should I go to start? Oh, sure. Yeah. So currently the only way to get on board is through the Tencent public, uh, white, public pre-sale whitelist. Mm -hmm. So you'd need to get, 10, get over 1,000 1, or more Tencent tokens. Mm -hmm. um, you would be able to buy that on, on Uniswap or gate.io. Mm -hmm. And then you would so need to log in. That's the qualification to invest, right? 
ten thousand. Yeah, points currently. Oh, that's the uh, that's the threshold to get on the white list for the public presale. Mm -hmm. uh, on July fifth, we are planning our, um, you know, our listing on Pancake Swap. So mm -hmm. at that point, anyone will in the world will be able to buy as much as they want mm -hmm. um, through Pancake Swap. All you will need is some BNB mm -hmm. on the Binance Smart Chain. So we're launching on the Binance Smart Chain. That's worth noting. I know a lot of people ask us why. That's actually a very, very strategic play by us. A, it's a, it's a very fast and cost-effective chain, so it's very inclusive for all sizes mm -hmm. of investors. B, it's, on, it's run by Binance, and we believe Binance will take a huge interest in our project because obviously their goal is to get as many people into crypto, mm -hmm. and this would be a brand new channel of, for them to do this. Plus, they have just launched their NFT mm -hmm. sort of NFT side of the business, and I know they will be interested in our technology mm -hmm. because it will give them It'll give them just a further, you know, for, it'll, it'll leave all the others further behind if they, they kind of work with us. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're expecting close cooperation with them. That's why the Binance Smart Chain. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so PancakeSwap, that's, that's, where, that's where it'll be. And we'll probably be listing on some centralized exchanges quite shortly after the PancakeSwap listing. Mm -hmm. So uh, you'll be able to buy Hero practically anywhere in, in due time. All right. Thank you. So I think that's pretty it for today. Thank you so much for sure. having an interview Thank you. with us again. Yeah. Absolutely. Anytime, man. It's always a pleasure. Yeah. And I'll I'll see you maybe next time if we have a chance. Yeah. Thank you so see much. You next time. I'll, see you in GTA. See you. Or in some game. <laughs> <With> our own <laughs> yeah, okay. In our avatars. Maybe that's our next interview. Yeah. Yeah, maybe that's <laughs> yeah. Okay. Thank you so much sure. for today's interview. Thank you, man. 네 여러분 인터뷰 잘 보셨나요? 아무래도 이 게임을 좋아하시거나 아니면 즐겨 하시는 분들은 관심을 충분히 가지실 만한 프로젝트인 것 같습니다. 어 제가 절대로 투자를 권유하는 건 아닙니다. 하지만 요새 또 메타버스가 대세인 상황에서 나도 한번 메타버스 관련 프로젝트에 투자해보고 싶다 하셨던 분들께는 좋은 기회인 것 같아서 이렇게 소개를 해드렸습니다. 오늘 영상 끝까지 봐주셔서 정말 감사합니다. 이상 미니맨이었습니다.